breast cancer is the most common cancer in the female and it accounts for approximately a quarter of all cancers diagnosed in female. And we are seeing a gradual increase, but definite increase over the last 20 to 30 years. And this is the same for most of the countries in this region as well, and definitely in the more developed countries. Now, breast cancer have several common presentations. In fact, the most common is alarm that the patient discover by themselves, usually accidentally. Uh, equally common are the, uh, the uh, some bleeding or discharge from the nipple. Uh, sometimes you can see a dimple on the skin; they don't used to be there. Sometimes it's a asymmetry in the nipple position, so one is higher or lower than the other. So these are some of the more common presentations for breast cancers. If one can feel a lump, and the lump is persistent, it's not that it's here today and not here to not here tomorrow. Um, then one should get the doctor to have it examined. The doctor will first perform an examination and very often one would have to carry out other tests, the most common of which is a mammogram and an ultrasound. And usually by doing these tests and examining the breast, one is able to come to a conclusion as to this is more likely to be benign or is it suspicious of malignancy. If it's suspicious of malignancy or whether if it's equivocal, one cannot be sure, then one will have to go on to do a biopsy to, 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 to determine the nature of the mass. Mammogram is often one of the very important tests and ultrasound of the breast is equally important. More recently, uh, MRI, which is magnetic resonance imaging, of the breast has also been found to be very useful. It is particularly useful when the ultrasound and the mammogram reveal something that we are not certain what it is. We cannot make a, uh, a definite call of the nature of the, of the, of the uh, abnormality, in which case MRI uh, often will give more information. Uh, there are also um, abnormalities or, or lumps in the breast that can be better seen on MRI than on ultrasound or mammogram. So MRI is now beginning to be um, a modality of investigations for breast cancers or, or breast lumps. Ultimately, uh, only a biopsy, only by obtaining some tissue from the tumour, that one can make a definite diagnosis. So a biopsy is often necessary at the, along the, 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 the course of investigations to make a final diagnosis. And this can be easily done either with a needle biopsy, when one can feel the lump, or we call a core biopsy, when we take a, a larger piece of tissue out, again using a needle. Um, if this is not visible or not palpable, one cannot feel the lump, but it can be seen on mammogram or ultrasound, then we can use a, a ultrasound guided or a mammotome biopsy. That's under the image guidance. You can aim directly at the area of interest or abnormality and you can take out those uh, under very precise guidance. So the chances of missing the tumour is less. Nowadays, we don't have to do lymph node dissection. Right? We can do something else we can do what we call a sentinel node biopsy. And that is, what we do is we inject certain dye at around the tumour before we, we remove the lymph nodes. And after injecting the dye, we can trace now, look into the axilla and find out which is the lymph node or which are the few lymph nodes that is lighted up first by the dye. And this is what we call the first station lymph node or sentinel node. Sentinel stands for sentry. It's like they are the, f they are the guarding uh, lymph node that screen from the rest of the lymph node. If we can identify lymph nodes accurately and subject these lymph nodes for examination, and we can make a decision whether or not to do the rest of the dissection based on whether these sentinel nodes are affected. If the sentinel node shows that there are tumour cells in it, then we will go on to remove the rest of the lymph node because the risk of the rest of the lymph node 
being affected would be high. On the other hand, if the sentinel node is not affected, it's clean, there's no tumour involvement, then the chances that the rest of the lymph node will be affected is very, very small. Therefore, there's no need to do the rest of the dissection. The advantage of not doing an axillary dissection is that the, the side effects after the surgery is less. The restriction in the arm, arm movement, the shoulder movement, the experiencing of pain and numbness in the armpit will all be less without an axillary clearance or dissection. Therefore, if we can do a sentinel node biopsy, we'll be able to spare some of the women from a full axillary dissection and, and the consequences of all the, you know, all the axillary dissection.